find a nice, comfortable place to sit. Or get yourself all snuggled up in your bed. And allow your eyes to gently close. And just focus on your breathing. Take a deep breath in. And then slowly and gently breathe out. Again, deep breath in. Then slowly and gently breathe out. One more time. Deep breath in. And slowly and gently let the breath out. And just relax. Now imagine yourself surrounded by a beautiful white light. A light so bright and so pure. A light of protection and peace. Breathe in this white light. Feel it as it enters your body completely, making you feel all warm and safe. You now find yourself standing in the most beautiful enchanted garden that you've ever seen. And the sun is shining brightly and it's a very clear day. And you feel very calm, very relaxed and very, very peaceful. You can hear the birds singing to each other and you can feel a lovely gentle breeze on your face and it's ruffling your hair. And as you walk on the path of this very special garden, you see that there are flowers growing everywhere. And there are so many of them in so many different colors. And some of the flowers are very tall. Some of them are very tiny. But you look ahead of you and you see that the path you are on has two other paths branching off it. And you wonder where they go. Well, it's up to you now to decide which path to take. Will you carry on straight ahead? Or will you go off to the right? Maybe you want to take the path to the left. You decide. The path you have chosen is the right path for you. And you just walk along it. And as you do, you hear a beautiful melodic sound in the distance. It's faint, but you can still hear it. It sounds so enchanting, so magical, but it makes you feel very happy when you hear it. So you follow the sound. you reach a giant red toadstool. It's huge. It even has a wraparound porch all the way around it, completely and utterly. It has big windows, all painted white with really colorful curtains. It has a big white door in the shape of an archway. It's a very fancy plush toadstool. And you see that the door is open and you wonder who lives there. But the beautiful sound is calling to you. So you walk around on the wraparound porch to the back of this huge toadstool. And that's when you see him sitting there playing his drum. What you see is a gnome, a beautiful gnome. And he's just sitting there playing his drum. He's so engrossed in his music that he hasn't noticed you yet. But you notice that he has an earring in his left ear and a red bandana around his head. 
He has lots of colourful beads around his neck, hanging down the front of his very bright and colourful shirt. He even has flip-flops on his feet, and you can see his hairy toes. He kind of looks like a hippie gnome. Next to him, you see two rather beautiful lavender candles burning brightly. It's like the flames are dancing to the sound of the drum. You see lots of really big crystals dotted all around him and all over the porch. They're everywhere. He even has a large sparkling quartz crystal hanging on a silver thread swaying above his head. And the sunlight bouncing off it is making rainbows everywhere. This really is an enchanted place. You can see very large sunflowers all over the porch too. And they too are dancing along to the music, swaying gently to the rhythm. It even looks as if they're smiling. You decide to sit down and watch him play and just listen. You can feel the vibrations. It's like little tingles of happiness all over your body. The music is so beautiful. As you watch, it's like your own personal concert and it makes you feel very special. So for a few moments, just listen to the beautiful sounds of the magical drum. Feel the happiness run through your whole body. You can even have a dance like the sunflowers if you feel like it. When the sounds of the drum slowly stops, you open your eyes and you realise that the gnome is looking at you with a beautiful smile on his face and you see now that he has sparkling blue friendly eyes. The gnome says he's not used to having an audience but he's really thrilled about it and he says thank you for listening to him play. He is delighted that you enjoy his music. He asks you if you would like to join him on his little stage, which is really the porch with steps leading up to it. And you say you would love to. The gnome explains that this is not just any drum. It's a magic drum. It can play melodies and it can make you really feel the music too as if you're part of it. Not only that, if you really feel what you are playing and you play the notes in a certain order, it can transport you to different lands. It's like dialing a phone number, but it's musical notes that you're playing instead. But you really have to feel the music, breathe the music, become the music. The gnome asks you if you'd like to try it yourself. Well, of course you would. But you tell him that you've never played a magical drum before and you're not sure if you can. But the gnome tells you to just feel the music. The magic drum is not about technique. It's about what you feel inside. 
It's about opening your heart. The gnome gives you the magical drumsticks. You take a big deep breath and close your eyes. And you begin to play, even though your eyes are closed. You just feel where the sticks should go. You strike the magical drum with the drumsticks and you feel the music with all of your heart and you become lost in this music. A place where time doesn't exist, just you and the music. You feel yourself entering what appears to be a tunnel of light and sound and you can see colours you've never seen before, hear sounds you've never heard before. What an amazing place. Feel the joy, feel the love. Spend a few moments here, really, really feeling the joy of the music. Let it fill your heart with feelings of pure joy and pure love. The gnome gently places his hand on your shoulder and brings you back to the present moment. And your awareness is now back on the wraparound porch. And you realize you had never left the porch. All this time, you were still there. The gnome asks you, what did you see? What did you hear? Where did you go? You tell him about the tunnel of light and sound and that you feel amazing and would really love to do it again. The gnome is amazed that you found the tunnel of light and sound on your very first attempt too. It's never happened before. The gnome tells you you must be very special indeed. You feel a bit sleepy now. So the gnome tells you that you can have a little rest on his hammock that's swinging gently on the porch if you want to. So you climb up on it and begin to sway from side to side on the very comfy hammock. It even has a very soft pillow to lay your head on. The gnome tells you that this magic drum has the power to help you sleep. And the gnome begins to play the most amazing 
and wonderful sound you have ever heard. You take a long deep breath in and give out the happiest sigh as you gently begin to fall asleep. Quietly, you hear the beautiful gnome say that you can come back and visit him any time you want. And you drift into a gentle sleep, a peaceful sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, you will be in your very own bed. And you will feel wonderful. Now imagine you are walking through a beautiful lush green meadow. It's a beautiful sunny day and the sun is sitting high in the sky. And you can see lots of fluffy white clouds just gently floating past. And as you continue to walk, you have a look around you and you notice the most amazing flowers. They're very pretty and they're in the most wonderful colours. Can you tell what kind of flowers they are? Pick one if you want to. The scent of them makes you feel very happy indeed. It's like breathing in pure love and happiness. You continue to walk through your lush green meadow, noticing the tall trees in the distance. And you can feel the long grass tickling your legs as you walk. You can also hear the birds singing as they fly over you. You can even hear the flapping of their wings. It's so nice here. You hear sounds in the distance, but you're not sure what it is. It seems to be coming from another field behind some very large trees. You reach the end of your field and go through the trees to the other side. And what you see is quite amazing. In another lush green field, you see men on horseback charging at one another. And you wonder why. It's then that you realise they are jousting. And each one of them has a long, well, what sort of looks like a lance or a very large spear, but without a pointy end. And they are riding very fast towards one another. You notice that one man stands out above all the rest. He is very large and has a big bushy beard. You also notice he has what looks like a crown on his head and he's dressed in very bright, shiny silver armour. You suddenly realise that you are in medieval England. Wow! The field you are in is so full of people, all watching from big stands with lots of seats. The people you can see are all wearing very colourful clothes. And at the largest stand, which looks very grand indeed, the flag of King Henry is flying high above it. It looks absolutely fabulous. You hear the sounds of music. It is medieval music. You hear the sounds of a lute being played somewhere. You can't see it, but you can hear it. It's then that the king sees you and gives you a big grin and a wave. He rides over to you on his horse and says, Hello there. Would you like to practice with us? Oh my word, you don't know what to say at first, and then you remember your manners. You realise that you have to bow to a king. So you give your best, deepest bow and say, Oh yes please, your majesty. The king calls to one of his knights to bring you a horse. The king jumps off his horse and tells you he will give you a lift up, because horses are very big. The knight who is also dressed in shiny silver armour, just like the king, brings over your beautiful white horse. And King Henry lifts you up and onto your horse. Your horse is quite big, but he's the right size for you. The king tells you that this is one of his favourite horses and tells you that his name is Lancelot. He then hands you your joust. You feel a bit clumsy with it at first, but you get the hang of it very quickly. King Henry tells you that they are just practicing at the moment, 
but the real competition will begin very soon. He tells you that if you win, you could win the best prize, which is a beautiful golden rose. And it really is made of gold. So you begin to train with the Knights of the Court and King Henry himself. For a few moments, practice jousting on your horse with King Henry and his knights. But make sure you don't fall off now. was fun. But now it's time for the real competition. The king lets you have a go first. So you get ready with your horse and you're at one end of the field and at the other end of the field is a knight of the court who is also getting ready. You hold on to your jousting lance and a beautiful lady in the stand waves a white flag and your horse begins to run with you on it. The knight's horse begins to run too. Your horse is breathing heavily and charging forward. You steady your lance and aim it forward and then suddenly there is a loud bang and the knight falls off his horse. You have won this round. The people are all cheering for him, shouting, well done, well done, bravo, well done. You are ecstatic. The grin on your face couldn't get any bigger. In fact, your cheeks are aching you're grinning that much. The king congratulates you and gives you a big pat on the back, which nearly makes you fall over because he's that strong. And then he says, now it's my turn to joust. So, for just a little while, while you get to sit and watch the king jousting, and the king very rarely loses, he is very good at jousting. So have a bit of fun and watch the knights of the court and King Henry joust. Now that the competition is over, the beautiful lady is handing out awards and you are astonished when she calls your name. She hands you a beautiful golden rose. You won, you actually won the competition. How fantastic is that? King Henry now says, Let's go for our feast. We will eat much and laugh loudly. 
so everybody follows the king to the banqueting hall in the great castle. You take your seat at the huge round table with the king, his family, his knights and his advisers. Wow, you are very honoured indeed. The king tells you that his best cooks are cooking up something special for you and for everybody. Everything you want to eat. In fact, there is so much food brought to the table, you give a little gasp. You have never seen this much food before. Wow, they really know how to party in medieval times. But you don't eat, you can throw your food on the floor. The king says, Don't worry, it's okay, we can clean it up later. You are astonished and have a little chuckle to yourself. You wouldn't dare try this at home. You would get into very, very big trouble if you did. After the feast, the king tells you that you can stay the night in his castle. They have a room already prepared for you. The king himself escorts you to your room. Well, actually, when I say room, it's more like the size of a small house. It's enormous. It has a fire burning at one end with great big logs burning happily away. The room is lit by many, many candles and it looks so very homely and cosy. The king leads you to your bed. Oh my goodness me. It's the biggest bed you have ever seen. It's a four poster bed and it's so big it can fit your whole family in it. It has big curtains hanging down either side of it. The king tells you this will keep out the cold and all the drafts. After all, sometimes castles can be very drafty. You climb in and snuggle down. The pillows are so soft and they are made from hundreds of feathers. So is the mattress you are sleeping on. It's so soft that you just sink right down into it. You are sleeping the night in a massive four poster bed. How cool is that? The king tells you it's time to sleep now. After all, you have had a very busy day and you won the competition. You forgot that you had the golden rose in your hand so you lay it on the pillow next to you and give a big sigh of happiness. The king says good night and goes off to his own room. You feel so happy and you feel that you've made a very good friend in the king. He is so nice and so kind, but for now, it really is time to sleep. You take a big deep breath in and then slowly and gently Breathe it out like a great big sigh of happiness because you feel so happy and so relaxed. Take another deep breath in and then just slowly sigh it out. And you feel so sleepy now. Take another deep breath in. Then slowly let out the biggest, deepest sigh you have ever done. And even though your eyes are closed now, they still feel ever so tired. So each time you breathe in, you take in all the good thoughts and positive feelings. And each time you breathe out, you let out all of your unwanted thoughts and just let them just drift away. So as you lie there, thinking about what an amazing day you have just had, you slowly and surely drift into the most wonderful sleep and when you wake up in the morning you will be back in your very own bed feeling fresh and bright knowing that you can visit good King Henry and his amazing castle and his knights anytime you want but for now night night Now, imagine yourself in your kitchen and on the table is a parcel and it's wrapped up in brown paper. 
So you go over and take a look at it. And to your surprise, you see that it has your name on it in very big letters. And you feel a little excited. So you go over and take a proper look at it. You pick it up and it feels heavy. You wonder what it is. You quickly tear off the paper and look inside. Oh my, you see inside the box is a pair of your very favourite trainers. In your favourite colour too. As you take them out of the box, a note falls out. And again, you see it addressed to you and it says, Hello, this is a present for you, a very special present. You think, well, it's just a pair of trainers. But you carry on reading the note. The note says that the trainers you are holding make the wearer invisible. It says that you can go anywhere you want and no one can see you. But you have to watch out though because they can still hear you. And you think this is incredible. And you wonder if they really do make you invisible. So very excitedly you put them on. To your utter amazement, when you put on the first one, your foot disappeared. You can't believe it. You only have one foot. You hurriedly take it back off again, just to check that you still do have two feet. Phew. Yes, you do still have two feet. You pick up the note and read it again. And you find that you missed a bit at the end because you were so excited. There is a PS at the end of this note. And it says that in order for your whole body to become invisible, you have to wear both shoes. Hmm. So this time you sit down and you put on both shoes. But you think to yourself something is wrong because you can still see your own body and both of your feet. You're a bit disappointed by this, but you wear them anyway. And you decide to go and show your friend your new shoes. But just before you do, you go to the mirror to brush your hair. You pick up the brush and turn to look in the mirror. And you give a little gasp. You are not there. You know you're standing in front of the mirror, but you cannot see yourself in it. Oh my goodness me, they really, really do work. You really are invisible. And you laugh out loud with delight. And you think to yourself that this is the most amazing thing ever. So you leave your house and go to see your friend. When you arrive at your friend's house, you see them playing in the garden and you shout out to them, saying hello. Your friend stops and looks up, puzzled. They heard you call their name, but they can't see you. And they look around trying to see where you are, but they still don't see you. Hmm, okay then, they say to themselves. They just carry on playing. So you call them again, a second time. They stop and look around, very puzzled now. And it's all you can do to stop yourself from laughing. But then you think you're being a bit mean. So you take off one of your shoes and lo and behold, you appear to your friend who promptly falls over with surprise, especially as you only have one foot. So you explain to your friend why you are invisible and they think that this is really cool and would love to have a go themselves. You tell them that they can have a go later but for now you're going to explore a bit. You're going to go on an adventure. You're going to explore the place you live in without being noticed or being seen by anyone. But there is one more thing you don't know about these special shoes of yours. And that is, 
If you just think of somewhere you want to go, you will be instantly transported to that place. How cool is that? So decide where you want to go. The place you live in or somewhere very different. So you tell your friend that you will be back later. You put on your other shoe and then you just disappear. So now that you are invisible, think of the place that you would like to go. Somewhere wonderful. And poof, you're there. Spend some time exploring. See what people are doing with their day. Take a stroll through the place you are visiting. Really see how other people live. And you know, you can do this multiple times. And you can, if you want, visit the moon. Or another planet too. It's up to you. They're your shoes. Where did you go with these special invisibility shoes? What did you see? Who did you see? But most of all, did you have fun? Remember, you can always use your shoes again and again and again. You can visit many more places many galaxies if you want to, meet many more people and see so many wonderful things. But for now, it's time for you to return home. 
thinking about the wonderful place you've just been. And you can tell your friend all about it when you get back. And maybe you can let them try out the shoes for themselves too. Now if you want, you can stay here as long as you wish. Go on another adventure even. It's your choice. Now imagine yourself on a beautiful winding path, deep in the heart of a wonderful tropical forest. The ground beneath your feet is solid, but soft also and a little bit scrunchy. Can you feel it under your feet? You feel a gentle breeze on your face as you walk along the path and you feel the warmth of the sun all over your body and you feel so at peace here. You look up to the very tops of the trees and you see glints of the evening sunlight shimmering upon the leaves, almost making them look like bright, shiny silver stars. And you can hear the rustling of the leaves as the gentle breeze pushes them into movement. And you feel like you are becoming part of the forest. And you feel that you are the forest and you can relate to everything living in it, every living being. You continue to walk peacefully on your path, looking at all of the different trees around you. So you stop and have a good look. These trees all around you are very wise and you can feel their wise energy surrounding you completely as you step deeper and deeper beneath this wonderful canopy of leaves. The birds are chirping in the distance, telling you that your forest is safe and the little animals are scurrying in the undergrowth and it makes you feel so happy so happy just to be here. There are a few trees in this amazing tropical forest that you recognize, but there are also many trees that you've never seen before and they are beautiful. You take a closer look at the nearest tree and you notice many things about it. It has branches that reach out in every direction. It's magnificent. Because the first thing you also notice is how big the tree is. It's huge. You notice what the bark looks like. You put your hand out. What does the bark feel like touching? Does it feel powerful and strong like you? And you can smell the aromas of this forest. You can smell the wood. Really smell the wood. What does it smell like to you? Does it remind you of anything or anyone? As you take a closer look at the tree, you notice that some of the bark on the tree looks like a face. A big, kind and generous face. How lovely. As you look, you can see the shape of the eyes a nose, a mouth. Then suddenly you hear a voice and you realise that it's coming from the tree. You're a bit startled, but it's okay. It's coming from the face on the tree. Oh my goodness me. You are astounded. A talking tree. Well, you've seen many things before, but never a talking tree. And he speaks so gently and elegantly. The big tree gives you a great big grin and says hello to you. And you smile and say hello back. The glorious tree tells you that he is so pleased to meet you and to talk to you as he doesn't get the chance to talk to people very often. He tells you that he is very, very old and has been here for a very long time. And you think he's a very wise old tree and you like him very much. He tells you that his name is Sedgwick. And you think that is a very cool name. Sedgwick tells you that 
high up in his branches there is a tree house. A very special tree house. Sedgwick calls it the tree house of sleep and relaxation. He created it. He says that this is the most relaxing place in the whole universe. Cedric says that if you like, you can spend some time in his treehouse and rest for a while if you want. Well, of course, your answer's going definitely to be yes, please. You look up to see the greatest treehouse you have ever seen. And as you do, a rope ladder drops down from one of its branches. How cool is that? You begin to climb up the ladder. It's a long way up, but that's okay, because you like climbing trees. And as you reach the platform, you see how big the treehouse really is. It's huge. It has its very own veranda, surrounding it, completely surrounding it. And on the veranda, you see a hammock, gently swaying in the warm breeze. You see great big plant pots filled with massive amounts of lavender, and it smells simply delicious. You see lit candles everywhere. Big ones, small ones, round, fat, chubby ones, and all in many different colours. And you also realise that up here in the treehouse, you can hear all of the sounds of the forest. The song of the birds as they call to each other. The sounds of small animals below going about their business. You can even hear the crickets singing their songs too. What else can you hear up here? Stop for a minute and just listen to the sounds of this amazing tropical forest. Take in all the sounds you can hear. What are they saying to you? Are they talking to you? So just for a few moments, let go of anything that may be on your mind and just enjoy the moment and be at peace with yourself just for a moment. Wasn't that wonderful? Just you and nature being as one. Now you decide to take a look inside the treehouse. And as you step through the door, you feel warm and safe. There is a fire burning in the grate. And again, there are candles everywhere. There is even a huge bean bag that you can sleep on if you want to. Or maybe you would rather sleep in the hammock on the beautiful veranda. You realise that the tree house has been built around the tree, but also has parts of the tree inside it. You can see thick branches going across the sea and with beautiful lush green leaves on them. There are leaves and smaller branches everywhere. Some of the branches even have lights hanging from them and it looks ever so pretty and so inviting. 
and the temperature is just perfect for you, exactly how you like it. You see near the bean bag that there is a fresh set of PJs laid out especially for you. They even have your favourite character on them. There is also lovely soft blankets if you need them. Probably won't, but you just might. The big talking tree really has thought of everything you would ever need to have a great sleep here, or to just relax if you want to. You see a little table nearby, and on it is a big mug of hot chocolate just for you. You pick it up and you take a sip, and it tastes delicious. It even has a minty flavour to it as well. Ooh, it really is scrummy. After you finish drinking your lovely mug of hot chocolate, you begin to feel a little sleepy. So you think to yourself that maybe it's time to have a little nap. And the only decision you have to make is where you would like to sleep. Will it be the beanbag inside the treehouse? The sparkly lights? Or will it be the gently swinging hammock on the veranda, surrounded by beautiful lavender. Lots of lovely candles. You decide. It's up to you. So you put on your new PJs and pick up the blanket and climb onto your chosen place to sleep. And you settle yourself down and give a big sigh of contentment. And you just listen to the sounds of this amazing tropical forest as you drift gently into the best night's sleep you have ever had. So night night, sleep tight.